All right, so there's mine. So it does cover that. As you can see, I haven't done the walk video yet. <laughs> but they're going to do some introductory stuff. So this is a grad course. It's in the Masters of Education for Secondary Teaching Mathematics. I don't know it's going to be a title. But it's, um, it counts as one of their, their electives. I think they do a bunch of education coursework, and then they do 18 hours of mathematics coursework, mathematics portion. So they're in-service teachers. I've taught it three times, I guess, in person. Never been highly happy. Not sure I am, but we'll find that out before. <laughs> it's, a, it's a work in progress. Huh? So it certainly changed moving it on, online. So this, what I have maintained is that there's three real threads, I guess. Too. So there's this sort of a weekly lecture I give. And those lectures have attached to them some problems, and I introduce some solving ideas and strategies, and techniques, and characteristics, and nice stuff. And then there's some basic problems that they work on from that. And then there's some weekly readings as well. And so they read that and they write a response, and I pay for each week or something. It varies. I've added a textbook this time, so they'll they'll read chapters of a textbook, but there's, at the beginning of the course, basically the first eight weeks, we go through the te two textbooks, and then the last eight weeks, we pretty much hit the page. they read articles. So they re write a response and enjoy, I agree with you, I don't know, I never know what to put as the prompts. I go backwards and forwards, I try to keep them general. You know, what is interesting, contrast this to what we saw last week, you know, uh, quite a, <laughs> but I, I, I find that very hard. It's a work in progress. So that's the second thread. And then the, the, the other thread is kind of the main thread of the course, which is what I call the challenge. So every week, I just throw some problems at them. Their job is to always be working on at least two of these. And they're meant to be hard. So they're not meant to be problems they can solve in a week. Sometimes they take a week. Sometimes they take a month. Sometimes they take two months, and the, the, the people are very, very excited when they solve them up two months. No, and this is not constant work. You come, you go to them, you, you away from them, you come back. So they're really, they're Putnam problems, they're Math Olympiad problems. So they're drawn from all over, but they're mostly from math issues. So unfortunately, a lot of them they can Google, but they're not many. So, and I haven't, don't think I've had any problems. That's why you're taking eight weeks and you're Googling the answer up. <laughs> I'm a bit concerned, but um, so that, those are the three kind of strands. So I'll, I'll show you. So most of the work is in this weekly. So each week they come in and they uh, get a nice little to-do list. Whoever it was who presented that the other week. So this is the first week they have to make a welcome video, which will be a voice thread video, and then they post that in the discussion. And Laura has nicely written instructions for all of that kind of thing. And then they watch a basic, basic lecture on these things that I made for you. Hey, welcome to the first and video lecture. We'll them. have an uh, online lecture. Okay. <laughs> May have played up the Australian accent. Video. <laughs> Connecting, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the lecture, I talk about some things. It's like I don't know, play that without. Sorry. So each lecture is I don't know, like ten slides. Kind of high level stuff, and so there's a, there's a fun problem. The census takes a problem. That's a great, great intro kind of problem. Someone shows up at the door and wants to know how many people, know how old the people in the house are, and the, and the, the parent that says, I've got three daughters, and their age is, you know, their product is 36. And, you know, the census takes is not happy, and it's like I tell you that some of their ages, but it wouldn't help you. So they add at the end, my daughter likes, my oldest daughter likes dogs. So you've got to work out how old the daughter is. So I mean, it's a very simple mathematical problem, prime factorization on this 36, and then you look at all the options. The, 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 the hard piece here is this, don't tell anyone who this goes online. The hard piece is my oldest daughter. In fact, there is an oldest daughter selects out the only option, because there's multiple solutions, and you know that there's an oldest solution. And you've got the end. So it's that kind of problem, and that's a very low-level introduction on the first day. 
I talk about this in the voiceover and then in the lecture problem, they then go the lecture problems of the week. First problem is solve the sensor. Well, you know, I lead them up to the precipice of this one and then do it. So the first, the lecture problems are meant to be very simple because they follow directly what we talk about. And so if they use the ideas we talk about, they should be relatively straightforward. But then on top of that, they start working on these challenge problems. And every week you get some challenge problems. There's some challenge problems. And so they're just meant to start working on those formatting. But they're meant to just start working on problems and they don't need to solve them at any given rate. Just need, I've never had anyone solve this problem. I think I have an idea, but I'm not sure of the actual solution. <laughs> That's okay, because these are hard problems, right? I could probably Google it some, but I yeah, haven't sat down and worked that one in great detail. And then the reading is the other piece. So here there's a bunch of reading. The fun one here is bias, bias time. And I mean, the idea of this is to link the, I mean, I, I feel like there's a huge divide with mathematicians, math teachers especially. They feel like they're different. Here's a dude talking about science and he's saying the same things that we say, right? The, the creativity and the discovery and the question asking, there's value. I think that's the big overall flavor of the course, which is it's more important to, to ask questions and think about questions than to have answers. That's pretty much his topic on that video. And so that's the first week's reading. It's very exciting. But so the each week for these challenge problems, they're meant to write a status report. Right? Breaking off that stuff, but it's just a simple. Even though it's going to be, I respect like, Just show me that you've done some work. There's a rubric that says I've done some work or I haven't done some work. <laughs> no, the 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 most important bit of this and what the rubric actually evaluates is what are you doing? Why are you doing it? How will it help you if you finish it? So. That's generally the structure for every week. So I don't get any of these. The maybe the most interesting thing that I added this time that I haven't explicitly done before is this uh, week three. We've got lecture and problems and status report, and then collaboration. You always talk about that's a really big part of it. So the students need to every other week they will present and post a voice thread video and then the following week their job is to dig into the other students voice thread videos and actually respond I mean not just that was cool. but have you thought about this did you try that you know i've been working on this same problem and this is what i'm thinking they're not meant to be posting solutions but questions but then i added for this time this this celebrating failure i think that's really important for teachers to understand so that they can make it clear to our students <laughs> that it's important, right? As mathematicians, we fail more than we win. I don't know, I tried to write something here. You know, success doesn't happen overnight. Students who give up often give up because they're afraid, afraid to fail. And if you don't try, you haven't failed. So we're going to publicly, you know, demonstrate our faith. So there's a discussion forum for that. Yes, yeah, so we're celebrating failure. And their job is every three weeks, they've got to post something. <laughs> That in that something meaningful in there about I have my brief notes myself about the introduction <laughs> I've got to write, but they've got to post something every three weeks celebrating a failure. And really, you know, at the beginning, just talk about failure here. By the time it's right, by the time we get to week six, we're stepping it up a notch. And so, no, I don't want you to just talk about a time when you didn't. And you should do things. I want you to talk about how you not being able to do it initially led to succeeding. So productive struggle, productive failure. That's what you're for. If you give up before you fail, then you can't actually struggle and achieve. That's that's a big part of it, and the reading and yeah, I've done that. But um, the big kind of outline of the course. I've got a general discussion forum, then these challenge problems, and this is kind of what I'd like, what, what you were talking about, I'm sure I can do it exactly, but for each of these problems, these problems span the uh, semester, so the biggest problem I think I've had, Laura's helped a lot, is trying to find a way for those to, I don't know, span the semester, 
because I've got this structure where I've got these weeks where this, the readings evolve and that kind of, but these problems should continue throughout the semester. So there might be people who are working on problems from week one in week 15, and that's fine. But it also <laughs> makes the course structure a little complicated. So I think if I just, I don't think I can do you describe that's thinking about it because as soon as they've posted one thing, they will always be able to see what's available in that forum. And so if their problem takes three weeks and they post twice in there, so maybe if I just moderate comments, that way they at least can't see a week. Like that way to approve them, and so I just approve them. Up. Yeah. And then the next one, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, that's Laura, we'll work that out, right? <laughs> Sorry, I need to unmute myself. That's fine. Clearly I'll take a few seconds. <laughs> I take your style. <laughs> so, like Joy described, I have a course calendar here, and I kind of broke the assessments up in readings and weekly stuff, challenge problems, and there's things due for each of those. And I decided to just go with a one, like you said, make it simple. One due date for everything. So stuff will open. I'm thinking like. Friday night, Saturday morning, something like that. And it will be open for like a week through the following Monday and everything's due the following Monday night. You get a peek. You might appreciate the, the weekends. So if you want to look at the week stuff this weekend and finish it next weekend. But, so there'll be a bit of overlap, but maybe that'll be helpful. So you can kind of see from this. We started at the beginning with lots of lectures from me and readings from the text, but later on in the semester, the readings are the heavier. There's no actual lecture there, but there'll be a okay video. That says this. So. And then the last thing is the, they'll do a final presentation, but there'll be, there's a, there's a proof portfolio, a problem portfolio at the end. So they can submit problems along the way when they think they're done with the problem, and I'll give them feedback, grading it, I'm just, just some general feedback, and as long as you get it to me by a certain date, I'll guarantee you feedback before the final ones are due, or extensive feedback anyway. And then, uh, at the end of the semester, this final portfolio is due, and I have six to ten problems they've solved during. So by that point, they've engaged in all of the things we're thinking about the problem. Not only have they solved the problem, but they've reflected on the solution process. They, you know, their, their weekly status updates involved that kind of thing in the metacognition and the thinking about what they were doing, and then the big picture, kind of looking at it when they're done and kind of analyzing how they went from A to B. And that's pretty much the structure of the course. I, I may, there's going to be a midterm exam, but I actually got rid of the final exam. The benefits from exams, I kind need of one. <laughs> at, the, at the end, it's, I mean, they're writing an essay every week, multiple other homeworks. There's enough for it. <laughs> so, got rid of that final exam. So, that's basically where I am with that. What's the wisdom? Oh, the wisdom is the cut. Very wide. You have to go to the website. But, anyway. <laughs> he, he, he's describing the problem solving process mm -hmm. there. The first, right? You struggle with it, you fight it, you ask questions. All of that got to yeah. have you seen Wreck-It Ralph? I haven't. Okay. So I love make, making little snippets and tying my class with movies. And in Wreck-It Ralph, one of the main characters is actually the bad guy of the video game. And he really struggles with being the bad guy. And eventually, he, he and all the other bad guys have a little meeting. And they have this mantra that it's OK to be the bad guy. And so I was just thinking that if you could like embed that short little snippet, the it's OK to fail. Yeah. Like just for comic relief or something. <laughs> That's basically the question. So these questions, right? Um, I've never taught online, so get the last one in the fall. <laughs> um, it's helped me think about the course very much. Think it better, structured it a bit, I can speak by making it up as I go along. So it's been helpful in that sense, the, the structure at the beginning. Um, certainly I, I've certainly got better at Blackboard things. 
never done more than just dump stuff on black. So that's been very useful. Certainly, I've got a better impression, obviously, of online learning now that I've actually been forced to do that. See how we see how things go, things go and fall. What does that mean? <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I come from a field where it's difficult to do online stuff because people are intimidated enough by the subject. Then when you add technology that they find difficult to deal with, it makes the whole thing more or more you know impersonal. I think that just makes things hard. And then I also think that students tend to students who are afraid of mathematics take it online because they think it'd be easy. That's that wrong approach. <laughs> but I I can see ways that you can make a an online course that's more personal. Yeah. I plan to all of the all of the actual videos I've made are just me talking, but I plan to have weekly like factory announcement kind of thing that are actually videos that this face. At least at the moment we've got the advantage that most of the people in this master's program are either our ex students or our instructors. So I would know them personally before the That was that was gonna be a thing. I know probably the audience are gonna be well, the one thing I noticed is uh, probably be good to put a uh, central standard time on the time time mm -hmm. for the due dates. Just in case it were to get someone from what, yeah. thirty minutes away and it's a different time zone. Yeah. Can I just put can I just put GMT like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, but, I mean, uh, I think it all looks great. That was just, yeah, that yeah was, that's a good idea. I'll put it in the course calendar. calendar yeah. yeah. Not, you know. I wonder if you even need the midterm. Well, I'm okay with that, but then I got to fill another week. <laughs> <laughs> you need to have a lot of work. And... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. If I just put. Mine is not really related to the online. I was wondering if you heard of Ron Eglash. He has like well, I am I am one of those that is afraid of that. <laughs> <No. laughs> um, but um, he talks about like real sort of anthropological math and math like uh -huh. right in Africa and he has a a uh, TED Talks that like really demonstrate the cultural mathematical understanding and yeah. so I think that either just personally and or yeah. maybe some of your courses that might be a um, course. I'll have a look. Eglash has a E G L A S. Okay. So he is me excited about math. It's <laughs> very difficult. You can roll it. <laughs> no, thinking about some of those problems, challenge problems. Well, actually, I mean, I was sitting here thinking if someone had at least what you presented here, like if someone had presented math that way to mm -hmm. me, I I would have been like, cool, yeah. you know, <laughs> rather than the drill and kill kind of approach yeah. that usually math is. We're trying to move away. From Right. So, so it seems even from an anti-math. So. I mean, I'm not an ed person, but I take an ed person. I mean, you may differ, but I try to approach this as a this is a math content course, but my job is to, you know, show some, show the teachers of this stuff some ways to do things that is actually more beneficial than what you describe. Right. I mean, problem solving, question. We're just asking questions. For a challenge. Yeah. And I think the failure thing would resonate with students too, because I know in high school and they are just oh, I just give up. I'm just done. It's but, like well, let's you know, let's think about ways to encourage or yeah. to mm -hmm. celebrate your failures and think about it. so I think it's great. I see a lot of awesome It's been fun. I've been wanting to I've been I talk about that in class, but I, I want to more I want to somehow make it like I've built it into this. Mm -hmm. I need to do that in my face. So, so there you go. <laughs>
Thank you.